So if you've been following the ready state for a second, you'll know that we believe that there's a gigantic overlap between sort of some of our medical professionals and the unskilled care that we can deliver and the care that strength and conditioning coaches and movement professionals can deliver. There's sort of a Venn diagram where there's a big overlap in the middle of like who owns what? Well, we both own both things. One of the problems I have sort of traditionally with kind of rehabilitative medicine, right, physical medicine, is that there's a foundational error in the way that we approach patients or people who are seeking care. In so much that oftentimes you cannot see a physical therapist often enough, frequently enough, to get everything done in that single session. So if I say, hey, this has to be a physical therapist driven change or a medical professional driven change, but I can only see you every other week or it took me 10 weeks to get in or it took me three weeks to get in or I get to, you know, you see that we have what we call a type one error there is that there's a foundational error in our thinking. So a lot of what we're trying to do and consistently do without to honor and respect our rehab, physical medicine practitioner friends and our clinicians and our technician coaches is to make sure that we are having a good communication about who owns what and see if we can help each other out a little bit. So one of the things that makes everyone cringe was when we hear the language of I'm gonna break up scar tissue, right? I don't know if you wanna break up scar tissue, that scar tissue is holding you together. And certainly if you're mobilizing, I don't know if you're really mobilizing scar tissue very much, right? We're certainly restoring how tissues slide, we may be changing fluid dynamics, all those things, but we're absolutely not breaking up scar tissue. But we are gonna mobilize the scar around some of the tissues, especially the related tissues, the neighborhood tissues, especially after surgery. So when we teach our athletes and our patients how to manage a surgical incision repair, aka a scar, then we wanna make sure that they understand that first and foremost, we don't mess around with poorly healed or incomplete healing scars. Those things need to look like they're there's no scabs involved. But if I am trying to wait for my therapist to be able to manage how these tissues are articulating, I will not see her often enough or frequently enough to be able to manage that. That means it's gotta be on me. And if I don't empower my patients or myself in order to take care of these tissues, I'll be left with an incomplete process where our system's approach of do these tissues slide and glide, that will be a problem. So let me show you a couple simple ways that we empower our patients when they're training after a surgery. So for example, one of the things that's really easy to do is called skin rolling. And everyone's going, oh, I knew you're gonna go with skin rolling. But you should be able to not just cross friction that, right? I'm rubbing back and forth. I'm just tacking and moving back and forth. All of the tissues here should roll, slide, and glide. So here I am, six weeks out of a total knee uh, resurfacing. And what I can be feeling like is, well, how does this tissue feel? Can I pucker it all the way around? Is it free? And it's really simple for me to say, hey, this doesn't feel like this yet right? And that I always have this reference limb that allows me to go, well, I can grab this here, and look, I can grab my skin around my kneecap. Well, it's a little trickier here, and this, is, this skin's a little thicker. So rolling this down, especially along the line of the incision, you can see that that tissue does not behave like the other tissues, right? It's trying to remodel and remobilize. But if I leave it alone, it'll just stick to the areas below it, right? That's part of the healing process, how we heal through these layers. So one of the things that I'm trying to do is make sure that it slides so that I'm not trapped in an exoskeleton sleeve as I begin to move and model the tissues underneath. So simple rolling, which means I just pinch and get, I can get it hot in a hot tub, I can get hot in a bath, I can get hot in a shower. I can use all these ways to just make the tissues a little bit more dynamic, right? But you can see how the skin refuses to pucker here. I'm grabbing it and I have this, this incision. Like, well, yeah, it's six week old. This, this tissues are newly modeled. So getting your athletes comfortable and responsible for managing their post-incision relationship is important. Another technique that we do, besides just you know being able to play with your, your scar during, um, during the TV, is that it's easy to get a big wrap on these things. I'm using our big compression voodoo band here, and I'm gonna wrap this up. And I'm not even thinking about compression here in this situation, I'm thinking about soft tissue mobilization. So, when I was working on the scar, I'm really working locally at how that scar, that incision, is articulating with the tissues directly in the neighborhood. But let's appreciate here for a second 
that if I'm looking at my kneecap and I pull the skin all the way down to my shin, it's still impacting the kneecap here. That this fascial, anterior fascial line, right, continues on as I get in my shin all the way down here, I can still see it pulling on my kneecap, which means that if I'm stiff in one part of the system, the whole system is gonna be less effective, less, have less movement option, less movement choice, right? Same thing works upstream. You can imagine that as I pull on this skin, you see the skin getting pulled all the way down in my shin. Look, still pulling, still pulling. I'm just following the, the fascial line here. And you can see how it makes a big difference from here to here in terms of how the skin articulates and how this, this tissue slides. So coming back, when I wrap this up, one of the things now that I can get is all of this what we call global shearing or global sliding or global mobilization. And all of a sudden I'm just are rotating and, and resisting my own rotation. I twist one way, my leg twists the other direction. And what I'm doing is I'm able to get the whole skin and the whole system sliding over one another. So it's a really powerful way to get the tissue system as a whole, this kind of glo global circumferential soft tissue system to be able to articulate and move en masse, right? I've got to get it all moving. And this, again, is something that m my physio, my chiro, my rehab specialist may not have enough time to do as they're helping me manage my care. So when I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do this myself. And I wanna shift as much self-care, self-management onto my patient's plate as I can. My athletes are capable of working on these things. Why? Because I'm assuming that they're already capable of managing their sleep and nutrition, and hydration and supplementation, right? They're working on all these other things where I'm assuming they are. So it's very easy for us to assign soft tissue mobilization, or we maybe call it not breaking up scar tissue, but breaking free the scar as it relates to the rest of the tissue mobilization, you get the idea. The bottom line is, it's up to you.